I'm Vanessa, and this is a picture of me holding a pterodactyl. Ah! Not to scale. Have you ever had a moment where you're asleep, you're dreaming, and you've realised you're actually in the middle of a dream? If you have, then you're officially a lucid dreamer. And if you are a lucid dreamer, you're kind of lucky. Research indicates only about half of us have that dreaming superpower. Now you might be thinking, hey, isn't lucid dreaming like in the film Inception, where you can manipulate and control your dreams and create all sorts of crazy messed up stuff? Actually, lucid dreaming just describes when a dreamer realises they're dreaming. So what I want to know is, can I use lucid dreaming to alter my dreamscape? Can you direct your dreams? Can you push the boundaries of the worlds that are within them? And are there any benefits to lucid dreaming? Now, the average person has somewhere between three and seven dreams a night. And even if you don't remember your dreams, they're happening. They occur most often during rapid eye movement or REM sleep. <laughs> And while we're not 100% sure why we dream, we do know that the process of dreaming is really important. We need that REM sleep, because people deprived of REM sleep are reported to be more anxious, irritable, and they start to eat more. I'm right away. There's an empty space that's showing. Impressive. Now, so-called lucid dreaming or being aware that you're dreaming might have actually been around for thousands of years. Buddhist dream yoga seems to be quite similar to lucid dreaming and it's been practised for millennia. We knew that while people are paralysed during sleep, their eyes can still move. You know, rapid eye movement. <laughs> So in the 70s, researchers got lucid dreaming subjects to send pre-arranged messages from within their dreams via those eye movements. This meant they could prove that they were sleeping in REM sleep and that they were aware that they were dreaming. So what I want to know is, can I use lucid dreaming to alter my dreamscape? So I'm checking in with a dreaming researcher, Denholm Aspie. He's at the University of Adelaide, and I am not. So again, this interview is happening via some movie magic, some clever entering. E editing, sorry. Hello, Denholm. What's the best way for someone to learn how to control their dreams? Namely me, because I have no idea how. Um, well, there's a lot of different techniques, and at the end of the day, it seems that different techniques are gonna be better suited for different people. Things like writing your dreams out in the logbook in the morning, laying very still, trying to remember what you were just doing um, before you woke up. These are some of the techniques that you can do just to get more familiar with your own dreams and that's going to make it more likely that you will recognise that you were in the dream state in the future. The scientific evidence on this points towards a technique called the mild technique as being one of the most effective ones that we've looked at so far and this is what my own research has investigated as well. In brief, it involves repeating uh, an affirmation that you want to remember that you're dreaming the next time you're in a dream. You are forming the intention to become lucid next time you're dreaming. That's the gist of it. But are there any real benefits for you to control your dreams? Lucid dreaming may help chronic nightmare sufferers and those with depressive symptoms. And a small amount of research indicates that there's a connection between lucid dreaming and performance in problem-solving tasks. Other research suggests you might be able to practice activities in dreams and be better at them in real life. That's productivity in a nutshell. But it is tough to get reliable results from the research because these studies are so small, so the research might be skewed just based on those people who took part in it. And while it seems people can have lucid dreams, there's still plenty of debate over whether we can prove people can actually control those dreams. Regardless, research on lucid dreaming has helped us learn more about dreaming in general. And research in the space has also led some people to question whether there's such a big distinction between being asleep and being awake, which is probably pretty useful info for us to know about because what if we're dreaming right now? How can you prove that you aren't? So good luck on your journey, fellow dream sailors. <sighs>
dreaming, 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 not dreaming.